Hi everyone, oh, welcome to this new exciting episodes of Story Makers. Now, all of you know that here on Story Makers, we dwell into the art of storytelling through the creative eyes of trailblazers, visionaries, and yes, innovators. On our platforms, we bring about people who share their success stories with us. And on that note, we have another visionary with us who has been working diligently in his field. He has come all the way from Middle East to share his story and inspire all of us. Please allow me to welcome CEO and CI of Pylog Group, Mr. Imad Sayyad on our sets of story makers. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> what a great thing for you coming in all the way here. And like I said, that story makers is about storytelling, people coming and, you know, uh, sharing their success. Now, I would like to start with your success story, like your journey, how you started, you became a CEO of Pylog Group. And also, like, what was your focus on data management and, you know, digital transformation? A lot of things that you've been doing and reaching to this level. Yeah. Please share your story. See, I had a very uh, modest beginning, mm -hmm. like everybody, uh, but uh, there was a lot to learn about the data, digital transformation. And when I entered this in 2001, and at that point in time, data was not so critically important for organizations. Mm -hmm. Correct. But again, you know, we knew that this is the vision that we carry. And we also knew that we can really create value for the organization sort of this data practices. Correct. So be it data management, data quality or data governance. So I had to learn a lot of things, but apart from learning it, I had to also explain and bring in awareness in the market. Mm -hmm. I recall a lot of those stories, you know, where people said that, okay, you are a data people, we don't need you mm -hmm. kind of thing. But okay. again, that has given us a lot of enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. We came out with right practices, right methodologies and also the processes that would help, you know, transform. And in this entire journey, you know, data became part of my life and part of my DNA. Mm -hmm. So, we started, you know, doing a lot more research and data, data quality, data analytics, because all these things today, if you look at it, but, important. you know, very, very important. Very without important. that, you cannot even, no enterprise can even take a deep breath, you know, exactly. without focusing on this. Correct. So, Again, you know, started as a system engineer and understanding the data, data models, data schemas and all of that, doing a lot of research on it. We build a lot of systems mm -hmm. and that uh, kept me grounded because again, you know, I had to deal with the reality, which mm -hmm. is actually where the industry is going and also look at the vision, you know, where I can take mm -hmm. these products or the services to the next level and could be a digital transformation platform, you know, mm -hmm. those are the things. So, it was actually a long journey, nearly 23 years now, but again, we are going strong, I am going strong. Pilag has been evolving mm -hmm. under the, you know, able leadership of the entire, you know, board members that we really put a lot of effort to take this Pilag to uh, the next level. Mm -hmm. And it has been a very, very, you know, humble and learning journey for, uh, you know, for me as well as the team, you know, the team that stuck, uh, stick with me was also nearly 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, they also yeah. learn and I am learning from them mm -hmm. and I am learning from the customers, I am learning from the market. But again, if you summarize it, it was learning and earning, you know, that yeah. was the, you know, the entire summary of the journey. Undoubtedly, I called you a visionary because what a great lesson that you have given us is that learning and then earning. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. You struggled because there were no data things at that point of time. Right. And now that how much you've brought and like it's an important thing for a company. Now, I know that there are two different projects that you work upon. That's, that is lean uh, data governance and of course, Pylog Group, of course, that's also a yeah. cloud management cloud. company. Right. How, what are, like what is it all about yeah. and how are they helping other companies in this? See, we have been in the business for nearly uh, three decades. Pylog existed from 1996. So, okay. you know, I joined Pylog yeah, in 2001. So, if you now look at it, we said that we need to separate the business into two different things. One is the <coughs> software solution. The other one is the content mm -hmm. because content is king. Correct. I mean, you know, without content, you know, nobody can run any business. True that. So, we created Lean Data Governance. Lean Data Governance is actually the best practices mm -hmm. that we learned 
during the last you know two and a half decades we learned and we packaged all those practices and enabled that or empowered that by AI which okay. is the artificial intelligence okay, okay because okay. today if you don't talk about AI people will chase you out of their meeting okay. rooms or the board rooms. It's the so, need of the art. Yes, so yes. you have to. So, lean data governance is actually a packaged product with all the common things that every organization is required. Mm -hmm. So, this is not you know a kind of a upsell or downsell of it, it is actually common that is required for every organization mm -hmm. and it is available on cloud mm -hmm. which is a subscription based model whereas, the pilot cloud is the content. So, we created software solution, we created a content solution. Mm -hmm. Content is something that anybody can consume because we would like to really uh, you know we wanted to digitize the entire content in such a way that anybody can subscribe to it. But again in India this mechanism of uh, uh, you know taking the content on subscription is not very popular, but elsewhere it is popular. Mm -hmm. So, you do not need to have the data experts or content experts. Mm -hmm. There is content millions of records verified records that are available on cloud and anybody can just pay minimum fees and then subscribe to it which means they do not need expertise they do not need to validate the data or content but it is all you know available for them okay and more importantly the pilot cloud is built from iso standards because by the way we also contributed to ISO standards because we said that if we want to bring in change or awareness in the market, we also need to bring in ISO. So, we became part of ISO development. So, okay. ISO 8000, ISO 29002, ISO 22745, okay. myself and our chairman we contributed uh, heavily mm -hmm. to these standards and then we developed those standards and the moment you take the standard to anybody, everybody would accept it. So, this data as well as the lean data governance both of them follow strictly you know ISO standards which means that anybody can easily consume them. Okay, okay. Now, again now getting to know that you are working as per the standards as well of course, this calls for like a Pylog stands out as a company. Yeah. Now, you are using a lot of exciting technologies in Pylog also. Right. What right. is your most favorite technology that you use here? See, I, I, I personally believe that in the last two decades anything that has disrupted the market is Gen AI. Gen AI is the disruptor and it is a huge disruptor and we are seeing uh, organizations who even do not have budget they are spending on it which Correct. means that everybody would like to capitalize on it. Okay. True that, true. And uh, again I do not think that Gen AI is the end of it, Gen AI is just the beginning of it because there are a lot of other technologies that are available. Mm -hmm. However, even before Gen AI came in from the last uh, 3 or 3 and a half years we were having really a research department. Uh, formed out of lot of uh, PhD students uh, mm -hmm. who are doing lot of research and we also do lot of sponsorship in terms of you know in US as well in some universities we do the sponsorship so that they can do research on our behalf and bring in the value of that research so that we can commercialize that or productize uh, that entire uh, research. So, technology wise if you look at it machine learning mm -hmm. is going uh, you know very very strong mm -hmm. and all the models that you have machine learning. I mean you know earlier uh, humans had to learn, now it is the machine time for the machines to learn Correct. and also continuously learning. Correct. Deep learning is another one that we use uh, you know as part of our technology and basically it is AI, ML, deep learning these are the things that we are using. But one of the things that actually excites me and also the market is the NLP natural language processing. Mm -hmm. You know while we are talking computers need to at one point in time understand this language. If they do not understand, how can you establish the conversation with the exactly. uh, system? So, mm -hmm. this is also something that we are working on mm -hmm. and this is a great product you know that we are building now or built it and we showcased it and it is creating wow factor mm -hmm. which is built on combination of AI, ML, deep learning, NLP lot of these technologies combined into it which is referred as AI lens which is part of. Mm -hmm. Uh, lean data governance, I mean we, that is the solution that we have yes. and uh, we started deploying it from the last few months. I mm -hmm. think uh, you know we can talk more about it, but mm -hmm. uh, you know it, just to answer you there is a great technologies that are coming out. If we do not adapt it, we will be at last not anybody else. No, you said it so rightly that of course, technologies every day we see there is another advancement. Now, when we say like about AI. What is it that you see? Where is uh, AI taking us ahead to? 
how is it going to trans transform especially the data management thing right see ai is here to stay this is the bottom line you know it is here to stay and it is up to humans how we would like to utilize it mm -hmm. to you know improve our productivity improve our efficiency improve the consistency and monetize it it is mm -hmm. up to us True. and if we don't hmm. then that would also be another uh, technology somebody else will take a, advantage of it will become only the users but not the developers of it hmm. so just from one survey in india we have probably you know only 2000 people with capabilities who can build this thing mm -hmm. consumers lakhs of people mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of people so we need to change that way it's not the the users but the universities and everybody need to put in lot of effort into building a workforce that can create it that can develop it that can uh, you know uh, perceive this uh, you know incept this mm -hmm. rather than just users users everybody uses it i mean you know chat gpt is been used by everybody Everyone. but who has developed it and do we have those capabilities say something that we also have to uh, look from that uh, perspective mm -hmm. so if you uh, you know if you look at the entire of the technology adoption and all of that in the market it is going very slowly but like being an ambassador of technology everywhere wherever i am going i am cautioning i am bringing in awareness and many of my talks are around that mm -hmm. there is you know pragmatic ai there are a lot of things you know we can talk about it but just you know as a matter of fact uh, technology is something that we will have to build technology is something that is not there just for the consumption of it but it is for us to uh, you know use where is it going i believe in future we will give task to the machines to do it and when we come back and it the task will be done and that is how the technology will take you know the that leap bound of it very true would like to just now said that you are um, absolutely a visionary or probably the face of technology or taking it ahead there is a lot of advancement that you have already done in pilog now i would like to know that what is the importance of having um, the data quality governance now what is the importance of this and how can companies you know benefit from this and if they are not using it how are they going to like lose the essence of the data in their company yeah so i'll just give you an example of the data quality this morning when i landed uh, you know i just uh, checked the address of it and all the data points it has shown if let us suppose that data was wrong mm -hmm. i would have reached somewhere else we right. wouldn't have been sitting here yes. so data quality means a lot and mm -hmm. imagine just you know i'm talking about a single trip you know there are organizations who would like to make the decisions on data quality people sit in the board room and they say that okay data is showing this way okay let us make a decision but who has assured who has ensured that that data that is presented that data that is actually produced is the right data Correct. and that's Correct. where the standards are coming in hmm. standards are there for interoperability standards are there to take you into the right direction standards are there to you know uh, for the organizations to sustain in the market mm -hmm. so data quality is i think you know it is least bothered at this point in time you know mm -hmm. but i believe that uh, india will take uh, cognizance of data quality mm -hmm. there are lot of organizations with whom we are working here mm -hmm. uh, you know they have taken cognizance of it and they look at the data quality and data quality cannot be achieved without data governance mm -hmm. so you need to govern <laughs> so from where the data is coming in how the data is processed and whether it is been processed by ai or is it is been processed by a subject matter expert and if it is processed how well it is processed what is it the missing and how do you complement it hmm. how do you supplement the data all these things are actually ensuring data quality data quality is a big field i mean you know there is a lot of research that is been done but there are about 12 different dimensions of it you know mm -hmm. of the data quality i am not sure who is aware of it but if you do not bring in the relevant dimensions into your organization you won't be able to capitalize on the value of your data mm -hmm. no because here when i was looking i was just listening to your conversation here this is one thing very important like uh, companies uh, nowadays we are ordered with data of course everyone like you just said that when once you landed you knew where to go until your data wasn't telling you rightly yeah now uh, trust 
and security of your data is also one of the prime things. Absolutely. Now, how do you ensure that the data of the companies, like when they ask Pylog to be intervening, how do you make sure that their data is safe and accurate? And of course, because it's all on cloud, how is it safe? How do you make sure? Yeah. See, we have again several enterprises that would like to have a solution on premise, which is within their data centers. Several organizations who is now, we, there is a trend that you know it, they are going for cloud. Mm -hmm. And again, the moment you say cloud, the data center security, the application layer security, as well as the source code security, all those things. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, if you look at it, what is the threat now? Cyber security, cyber if security. you know, if, mm -hmm. if that is, if you do not place cyber security for the data centers, it is a biggest threat. Mm -hmm. That is why cyber security is also evolving. And mm -hmm. if I tell you that, there are a lot of AI algorithms that are learning itself and improving the security. Okay. And that is also a beauty of this, you know, the evolution of AI. Mm -hmm. So, AI is there to protect AI, you know, because okay. that is a different use case. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, it is secured and again, standards are there, you know. Mm -hmm. also, uh, 27,000 is the standard for security. Correct. And if you implement that standard and comply with it, everybody with their close eyes, they will, you know, believe that this is the right mm -hmm. data. And that is where, and again, the communication of the data, exchange of the data, sharing of the data, all these things have got some protocols mm -hmm. and some standards. Mm -hmm. And the moment you apply those standards, you would be able to, you know, give that assurance to the customer saying that your data is safe. And also another thing is that we cannot use any customer's data, you know, for others. Mm -hmm. So, that assurance also we need to give. And that is why in Europe there is GDPR and, you know, personal law protection in various countries. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we need to assure and give, uh, you know, assurance to the customers that your data is it's your safe. data okay. and it is safe and we are not taking anything out of it and we are not monetizing it rather than we are giving you additional data mm -hmm. so that you can create value out of it. Mm -hmm. And that is a wonderful thing for a lot of companies who are listening to this program. We are getting to know that how Pylog has been playing a pivotal role in, you know, securing your data. Now, like you have been on this project for um, almost 23 years, yeah. you have been mm. working on this project and you are also evolving as a company. Right. Now, you have been working with other companies where you must have faced challenges or rather I would put it this way that where do you see companies are facing challenges when they use this data because to use it correctly is also one of the things. Yeah. See, I personally believe that 9 out of 10 companies does not have a data strategy. Okay. So, if you do not have a data strategy, you do not know where your data is Correct. and what data you need mm -hmm. and from where can you get that data and how can you use it, how safe it is, mm -hmm. what quality it is. Mm -hmm. So, if you do not have a strategy for something, mm -hmm. then you you really, you know, you are lost. lost and you know, you are in dark. Mm -hmm. That is why what we are doing is we are recommending every organization that you start with data strategy. Mm -hmm. Be it small, no issues. Mm -hmm. You know, you cannot uh, achieve everything in a year, but start with a data strategy mm -hmm. rather than a business strategy. Business strategies are there. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. people are sharp enough how to make money, mm -hmm. how to monetize it, how to productize it, but data strategy is important. I will give you one more example. If you now look at Amazon, why Amazon is so successful, whereas there are other companies who can do the same thing at a lesser price, but still Amazon is successful because I think it is the only company on the planet who has designed their data strategy 15, 20 years ago to collect all the data so that they track you, they check you know what you are checking and they will not leave you until you, you buy it. Yeah, that is Amazon. Walmart is another example of it. I will give you an example of it you know hmm. from somebody are getting married until the kid is born, they are tracking it and they are selling everything at that moment what is required for them. Mm -hmm. And that is the data strategy. So, mm -hmm. if you do not have the right data points, mm -hmm. you would not be able to establish any data strategy. So, organizations need to realize that data strategy is important. Once you have data strategy, you will have the AI strategy because without data, you cannot embark on a journey of AI. Mm -hmm. But when you say this that you know you have been watched thoroughly like Amazon you are saying that they really keep an eye of what you are looking at, how have you been growing in your field and then of course they are going to you know be sending you links accordingly. Yeah. Now here I would want to know this is my personal question here with you which is does it come with a threat also sometimes you have been watched all the time yeah. like how do you manage to be aware of not somebody coming to you all the time and telling you buy this buy yes, that. Yes, yes. Digital surveillance is there everywhere. 
everywhere. You know, all our devices are location enabled. Okay. So, you know where you are going at mm -hmm. any point in time. But mm -hmm. the good thing about these organizations who are collecting the data is that they take your consent. Mm -hmm. Probably when you are creating a user ID, when you are creating an mm -hmm. account, there is something where you say, I agree. I agree. Correct. So, but nobody goes through that, you know, <laughs> 10 pages of uh, a document, what you are actually mm -hmm. agreeing. True. So, you agree to it and that is why, you know, they are tracking. Mm -hmm. But now, a uh, lot of laws and acts have enforced on these companies uh, saying that you allow user to go back and delete that history okay. or you know uh, wipe out everything that mm -hmm. they were tracking you can do that mm -hmm. okay. even apple does that i mean okay. you know now apple is collecting lot of information mm -hmm. that's why probably when you are talking mm -hmm. you know immediately you there is something popped up from youtube or there is something popped exactly. up from somewhere exactly. so you have a setting it mm -hmm. is up to you mm -hmm. the device is in our hand mm -hmm. go and turn it off delete everything mm -hmm. then there is no tracking mm -hmm. and that way you actually you know you, your privacy is protected it is secure mm -hmm. but the consent is always taken from them directly or indirectly some of them explicitly some of them you know uh, yes. just the you know take it you know when you say agree they start collecting that so now that what we need to do is be very aware of if you're saying i agree read all yes, the terms yes, and absolutely, conditions absolutely and just uh, but you know shopping is one thing that women cannot <laughs> stay away from so uh, what a great info that i got now uh, we also know that you've developed an ai lens for your uh, SaaS based lean data governance. Now, this is one particular term which I had actually had to see. Yeah. Could you please tell us more about it? What is it all about? AI lens, it is an artificial intelligence lens. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, lens via which you can see the insights, right. lens via which you can get the intelligence. So, it has got hundreds of use cases, such as, uh, you know, one of the things uh, that users actually face biggest problem is that learning a new solution. Mm -hmm. AI lens tells you. You just speak to it saying that I would like to do this immediately, it will get it done. Mm -hmm. So, you see the user experience has completely changed. Mm -hmm. So, awareness, navigation, helping uh, you know uh, the user and again we are talking about data management systems. Not everybody understand data, mm -hmm. data quality, data governance. So, they feel always you know that it is a complex thing. So, what we brought in? We brought in an AI lens which is a conversational AI like uh, what I said it is a natural language processor, natural mm -hmm. language understanding. Mm -hmm. So, if you ask something mm -hmm. it will get it done not just you know say this say that I would like to do this immediately it will get it done and it will say that shall I proceed with this? Yes, proceed get it done but again taking consent of the user. So, that is one of the examples that I have given or if you would like to know more about it again when you are talking about data quality of your enterprises you would not ask a question uh, where do I find coffee you will ask you know how good is my data or how many sales we been done or how, how much money I have spent on this particular thing or what was the financial results for the last uh, uh, quarter and these are the questions you can ask questions and mm -hmm. it will give you. Mm -hmm. So, how nice it is for the board members or the C-level mm -hmm. uh, executives to go and ask those questions, go into a board meeting, you have all the information accurate coming out of your AI lens and then you can go and make the decisions. Rather than you know nothing, you will ask X, X will ask Y, Y will ask Z and then you know probably even you cannot trust it. But here it is uh, the data quality management system, data quality governance solution and it speaks your language. You mm -hmm. can speak in your language, ask questions and get those stats and uh, you know information and you walk into a meeting, you will have again information, you can dominate it, you can control the meeting, you can make the right decisions and this is what is data centric decision making mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So, AI lens has got a powerful feature with that and again. Um, can you please find me if, if any organization says that can you please find me this valve where can I find this or maybe uh, this fan where can I find it. It goes searches on the internet and tells you these are the different yes. prices and from here you can get it and the shipping is easier from here. So, all that information of it and again especially the analytics, analytics is something that is derived from the data quality and severus you know millions of uh, uh, transactions mm -hmm. and this is sitting on top of that and get all the information with all the connected systems mm -hmm. and gives you the answers mm -hmm. and we are excited about it. We deployed only 20 plus use cases so far, but there are 100 plus use cases that we are planning to release as part of it and anybody can use it as long as they have a data strategy. 
Wow, now here when you say that you know you can ask anything, now here we have to be very mindful of what we are asking yeah. the AI lens yeah. because you know you, you need to ask like you said that once you are going for a board meeting, you have all the info with you and of course you can command the meeting. Right. Now while you are using this AI lens, you be mindful of the questions. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> right. absolutely. Now you also said about data strategy. Now this has been when you once you started, you said data strategy, it was also stuck in my mind. Because like when we're in business, we always want to have a strategy of how, right. like you said that before also. Yeah. What is data strategy and how does it help companies to actually uh, use the system like a data management system in a good way? Right, right, right. So data strategy starts from data discovery. Data mm -hmm. discovery means now let us suppose this organization. Where is the data for the last five years? Mm -hmm. I don't think that anybody would be able to tell that this is the hard drive or this is the system where all the data resides. Maybe there is something on the USB drives, pen drives, there is something you know in the backup, there is something. Mm -hmm. So first of all, data strategy means you need to understand where the data is, data discovery. Mm -hmm. So discover where the sources are, discover who owns it, mm -hmm. discover you know how relevant it is, mm -hmm. discover how complete that is, that is the data discovery. Mm -hmm. Once we have the discovery, then you do the diagnosis of the data. It is exactly like you know you go to a doctor and you know doctor you know just he will not give you a prescription unless yeah. he does a discovery, he does a diagnosis, uh, sometimes you know longer uh, you know diagnosis, sometimes shorter, but without that he will not give you. The moment you stand there, he will not give you a prescription. Hmm. So data strategy is also building from discovery, diagnosis and then check how much of the data is still relevant to take you forward, mm -hmm. not take you backward, take you forward. Mm -hmm. And when you determine that whether the data set is really complete, if it is not complete, then you, you know curate it. So, we call it as a connect, mm -hmm. connect to the systems, mm -hmm. collect, collect the data, mm -hmm. consolidate, bring it together. Mm -hmm. Again, if nothing is there or maybe something is missing, complement it, curate the data mm -hmm. and then move that data into the futuristic system. So, this is the data strategy. Mm -hmm. Again, you know each data set would have different attributes, each uh, data set is used in business differently. So, you need to have this data strategy and again what we are doing is that we are building also the data strategy along with the process strategy because with AI certain things can be done easily, mm -hmm. very easily. Mm -hmm. But organizations are still using those tedious processes where you have huge manpower where you have lot of effort that you have to put in rather than using AI. Mm -hmm. So, our job is to bring in data, feed that data into the processes and elevate the organization, you know take that organization to exponential root of it mm -hmm. and that is what is the strategy and this is what is actually digital transformation. Correct. What is digital transformation? You know collecting the data, using it rightly so that you can create value out of it, so that your organization can move forward. Yes. But that digital transformation these days is just replaced by some technology components and mm -hmm. then we say okay here we are mm -hmm. you know we have a new system, new look and feel, new people but it is not digital transformation. Digital mm -hmm. transformation is a journey mm -hmm. and again it, it starts with maybe you know one or two years of uh, quick results but it takes nearly five years for any organization to become you know a digitally fully transformed. I am sure because like now that we say AI is all that capable to take care of everything. Now of course, people in the organization, they also are in threat. What if it takes away all our work, what would we be doing? But yes, because we are te technologically, we are uh, you know elevating every day. Right. It is the need of the hour and yeah. digital transformation is really, it is really required. And here we have uh, Dr. Imad Sayed who has given us all the information of how important it is to have your data managed. Now lastly, it is an important question once again, we are sitting here with a visionary, you have a lot of visions for yourself, but what is your advice to all those young entrepreneurs, all those being wanting to be into this particular field of uh, digital transformation? See, since we are now in a evolution phase of AI, people need to understand that they cannot carry on with their skill set that they have. Mm -hmm. So first thing is that unlearn. Mm -hmm those unlearn and when you know people say that oh you want me to unlearn for whatever I have done for yes this is the thing unlearn whatever you know relearn mm -hmm. so if you unlearn it so because like I said organizations are practicing the legacy methods mm -hmm. people are also you know studying whatever they are studying in their academics I am not saying it is waste but it is not anymore relevant mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So you need to unlearn that those practices, relearn, then you can you know start earning respect, earning knowledge, earning command, earning you know everything as part of your journey. But that that's something I'm you know I'm struggling again even in my organization as well. We have put down a three months period now that if we cannot. complement or supplement our productivity by 30% by december then we will have to really you know do something big mm -hmm. so people are now trying to bring in that productivity and again you know if let us suppose human beings are very very innovative mm -hmm. we must not say we must not think that machines are going to take over absolutely never never will happen because you know we have come out of pandemic I mean, everybody thought that it would be so people i mean you know human beings are most intelligent and innovative creators yes. so we must not be threatened by machines because we are the guys who are teaching it the and you know yes. machines so we don't have to be worried but what we can do is that all this lethargic work lazy work mm -hmm. repetitive work which does not create any uh, innovation or new ideas that we can give it to machines mm -hmm. and you do what you are meant for mm -hmm. intelligent work innovation you know new ideas wow. uh, uh, shop in it mm -hmm. so this is the message and again uh, one another message that i would like to give to all the universities and academics is that please refresh the syllabus because mm -hmm. the curriculums have outdated now and whatever you are producing that is no more relevant are very very little relevant mm -hmm. and if you don't change it i mean you know people will not study in the universities they will go out and learn outside rather than going through the academics because that is a bigger threat that i am seeing mm -hmm. really that we get to see such a great advice what you have just told us that unlearn now nobody comes and says that unlearn what you've been learning all through your years and start learning again very very important we are in such an era where we need to relearn new things be absolutely apt with the technology because technology is advancing every day yeah. what a wonderful interview all through the interview i loved enjoying like totally enjoyed uh, and understood what is data management is all about my knowledge was really bleak but then now, by now i know how important it is for all the companies to be having it uh, to secure their data and have a strategy also Thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Imad. You came here and you graced Story Makers. It's my pleasure. It's my <laughs> honor. Thank you. Thank you so much, thank you. and thank you, my dear audience. Like I always say, that this show is about gracing your information and also telling you stories of visionaries. Now, please make sure that if this story has touched you, do not forget to write us. And if you really think that you too have a story which can transform the world. what are you waiting for we are here with open arms to receive your story till then this is simran signing off but i promise that i will be back soon stay blessed <laughs>